Good afternoon and welcome to another match of Dota 2. We have ourselves the 4PL Cup number 10. We have ourselves Infused versus Anal Riders. That is their team name. Just pointing that out. And uh, it seems like uh, we are ready loading in, so we are just waiting for the spectators to load in before we can get ourselves into this match. We will have Infused on the Radiant side with the Dire side being reserved for Anal Riders. Um, and this is a match in round two, if I believe, if I'm correct here. Yes, it is a match in round two for the 4PL Cup number 10. There's going to be seven rounds in total. And, uh, well, this is round number two. One thing to note, if there's going to be more, th well, if round number seven is going to be too late, like too late on the day, p teams don't want to play anymore, or at least uh, maybe no one's going to get very, very late, the uh, games will be postponed until Tuesday. So, just uh, so you are aware. And I'm sorry, I also still have a cold, so it's uh, pretty annoying for me to deal with. As my nose is kind of shutting down at the moment. Um, we have ourselves Bans, though. Bans being the Broodmother as well as the Lycanthrope so far. So Darkseer and Naga Siren still in, but don't, don't worry. Still four more bans. And maybe, hopefully, Ten we see three. a ban on the Morphling. That would be nice, right? Radiant team band. That would be nice. I wouldn't mind seeing that. <laughs> and I just noticed that they don't have a team profile, so maybe I should put that up, shall we? Where is the team? Star starboard! <laughs> Moving the starboard. On the right Our side, we'll have anal riders. Yes, I just wrote that. Okay, that's funny. And I will activate it there. Well, I will activate it in the next one, because you don't really need it right now. Anyway, we have got the Rubik ban out as well as so the Naga Siren. We've seen Rubik being banned out in the previous game as well. I mean, it's a it's a bit of a trade-off. Sometimes we've seen him banned out, sometimes picked up. If he is ba if he's not banned out, though, he's being picked up very fast. So it is a good one to ban out. It's, it's a hero that you normally just don't want to face. If you don't have a good player for it, and you don't know if your opponent has one, you're always better to ban that one out. We have a Nature's Prophet ban, so we will see either a Morphling or a Darkseer in this pool as Nature's Prophet gets banned out together with the Naga Siren on the Dire team. Let's see what Infuse has in store for us though. I mean, first pick will go to the Dire, just having to note that. We might not even see a Morphling. We might not. There goes the Chen, we mean Darkseer still in the pool. What did they want to go for? Uh, it's a dark seer. Su surprise! Radiant no, no surprises. Pick. I now notice that I have not set myself as offline for this one. While well, I should. Where is it? Where is it? Oh, there was. Oh, there we go. Offline. So we don't see any messages anymore. Sorry for that. And uh, let's see what Infuse wants to pick up. Do they want to go for the Morphling, for the Shrek, for the Titans? Hunter? All heroes that we normally see picked up in the first three heroes that are being picked Invoker up by people, together with the Invoker, Shrek. of course. And the Shrek will be indeed picked up Dara here. And wow, I just saw a bad joke being made <laughs> in the chat. I'm not going to repeat it though, but someone else said already that is bad. So you know which joke I'm talking about. It has something to do with the team name of the Dire Side. I wonder why. Yeah. Let's see. Will there be a Morphling? I mean, normally with a Darkseer, you want to get some uh, some combo going on. Enigma's still in the pool. Ten so we might see a... Uh, um, Enigma Black Hole Vacuum. That would be amazing to see. Of course, there's still Enchantress in the pool as an extra jungle hero for Infuse to pick up then afterwards. But if we, p if we see Enigma combined with the Morphling, I do think that the Dire team is looking very strong. And uh, yeah, the, the overlay for in the game, I just see the comment there as well. The overlay is still from Valve, so uh, still the international overlay is from Valve, not by me. Sorry for that. Well, no, I don't have to say sorry for the overlay that Valve did, so, you know. Anyway, let's see. They're taking their time, going into their bonus time. One minute left. What do they want to go for? Come on, give us an Enigma. Give us a good combo woman. Oh, Enigma and Sand King. Then we have Vacuum, Black Hole, Epicenter. What else do you want? And then we don't have to deal with that Morphling. They're taking the time, okay. <sighs> it is a Tide Hunter. Which I, I, I don't say Tide Hunter is bad. Tide Hunter is kind of nice. Radiant team pick. Wow. A Shadow Fiend pickup in the first three pickups. Uh, first of all, 
I don't think he would have been banned out, so he don't know, they didn't really need to pick that one up. And they, gi they give away what they want to do, so we might see uh, something like a storm or something coming off from Infused. Second of all, a Tidehunter is, of course, a very strong player. I mean, uh, player, it's a very strong hero. We saw him winning in the previous game as well. I mean, team fights are just something that can turn games around. If you get a couple of good team fights in a row, you basically own the game. Uh, Shadow Fiend can help with that. Mine is armor as well. And, of course, uh, the, the Requiem of Souls is just pretty powerful in a team fight as well. So if you have a Ravage, if you have a Requiem of Souls, if you have a Vacuum, Dark Seer Roll, it is a lot of team fight potential uh, being there. But, uh, yeah. Oh, hey! Something I forgot to say earlier is that, uh, well, I did say that this is the 4PL Cup, but we need to support the 4PL Cup. We want to see more of these, and you can do that. You can support them by liking them on Facebook. On Facebook.com slash 4PL.dota2, and there is the Earthshaker for Infused. It's like the disruptor of team fights. Fish are in there, and everything stops. It's almost like the Song of the Siren, but then shorter. Let's see though, let's see uh, what they're gonna ban out now that they know that the Earthshaker is there. I mean, we still have all the jungle heroes and I'm quite surprised that there's no Enigma just yet. Enigma and Darkseer are such a strong combination. There goes the Venomancer, Radiant no longer available to either teams, it's got banned out by the Dire Team. I'm just, I'm just thinking, I mean, I don't normally see Shadow Fiend so I, do, I can't really, I can't really guess what they want to go for there. I mean, Shadow Fiend is used as a solo mid, with Darkseer being used as a side solo normally. Tidehunter is lately being used as a side solo, so basically they can go any way they want with these, this lineup. Of course, Tidehunter could go in a tri lane too, or a dual lane if they have still a jungle hero, which there are still two in the pool off, so they might just go for that, but. I, uh, I don't know. I don't know. I can't guess. Ten and it's hurting. For infused, I mean, we've seen the Lushrek Sanity combinations. The Shrek Earthshaker combination, it works about the same. I mean, you can get a Fisher, you can get a follow up zone <laughs> from the Shrek, and Earthshaker is a bit more safe and is one of the better heroes in the tri lane if they want to indeed go for that. Queen of Pain will be banned out by infused. Expecting another solo lane coming off from the Dire team, which is quite surprising to be fair. Shadow Fiend and Darkseer already being two of the solo laners that I have in mind anyway. Let's see last ban out for the Dire team before we uh well we see another ban out from the Radiant team. <sighs> and there goes the Morphling Yes! Radiant team ban for all the Morphling haters, I'm gonna call them haters. Um you can be happy. He is no longer in. They don't want to deal with that one. There's still a lot of carries in the pool, but we at least won't see more flame. Let's see a last pick up for a last benefit for Infused. Again, Enigma is still in the pool as well as uh, it's a Chen. But saying that, I mean, they left Enigma in the pool uh, at the start, so they might just leave him in still, just because they don't think they will pick him up. But it's still a good jungle hero to have, and it still fits into the lineup as well. I mean, more team fight and a jungle hero. And a stun and pushing power. It is one of those heroes that I mean. I can you tell I'm a fan of the en Enigma. It's uh, yeah. It's just a good hero to pick up. Just pick up the Enigma and pick up something like a range, something to go with a tight hunter. Yeah. Ten seconds remaining. Let's see. Though they're taking their time. Still have 30 seconds in bonus time. I have to say both of the teams are using their bonus time pretty solidly, and I'm just uh, while we wait. Because like I said, I can't guess it all that much anyway. While we wait, I'm just... Assassin. Wow, I'm, I'm not going to drink anymore because it's a Templar Assassin. So Tidehunter, I guess they... Uh, I guess Infuse gets right with betting out some solo lanes because Templar Assassin is usually usually a solo lane. And I have to say, I'm quite lost at what they're going to do with their lanes. Maybe Wagamama has a better clue. Probably does because, you know, he is a pro player. I'm not. But I uh, I like this pickup. I'm curious to see how they're going to use it, and we're going to see at least uh, a bit of aggressive stuff going off here. And I just have to check, uh, because I earlier indeed, uh, Dendi is playing on the cover in uh, in this tournament, but it's not in this team, it's not in Anal uh, Riders. 
Jeez. So, no Denny just yet, sorry people. He is not hiding in this match. Uh, Crystal Main will be picked up by Infuse, solid support, and going for a tri lane at that. I mean, Urshaker, Crystal Maiden, it is uh, two of the tri lane heroes that are probably the strongest together with whatever carry they want to pick up. Anti Mage, Face of Void, they have so many options. The only thing they really have to worry about is the <laughs> immense team fight potential coming off from the Dire, but it will depend on the laning phases how that goes. And right now, I mean, Darkseer is going to be fine on this lane. I mean, he won't Disruptor. die. And there's the Disruptor. Neither. And there's his. Oh, what the hell? Well, that's at least a range carry. And one thing I haven't pointed out yet is that, the, of course, Templar Assassin's Melt gives him minus armor. Shadow Fiend gives minus armor. That's a lot of damage. And it's going to be uh, Roshan very fast for the for the Dire team. And uh, there we go. Overlay switched. And just, I mean, they they are going to have to win on the lanes in order to win this game. I mean, their tri lane has to work Prepare out. For battle. And they have to make sure that they're not going to get caught out by... Oh my, my, I mean, seriously. Kinetic Field, Vacuum, Static Storm, Vacuum of Souls, and a Ravage. And that is definitely your team gone, no matter if you have two mechanisms or three. That is just so much uh, so much AoE damage coming out of the Dire team. And I don't know why I follow this guy, because his name is really, isn't really invited. But I will invite the Dire team first, he was playing what, four anal riders on the Dire team? Pussy in thongs. I don't really nor normally say that word, so I'm probably saying it wrong. Pussy. Pussy. Pussy cat. Uh, collecting telephones is on their tele- on their Templar <laughs> With a reference to the international translating skills. Uh, we have Alcor on the Darkseer. We have on the top lane. We have the Tidehunter played by Rambo. First period. And we have Pimpo on the Shadow Fiend. And everybody of Infused on the bottom lane looking, uh, sorry, on the top lane looking for something, but they won't find anything though. But Infused, let's see who's playing what. We see Fishbone on his uh, signature crystal main, Mini on the Earth Shaker, Stand in Austia, Austa, Austa, playing the Lashrak. And we have got Region the playing the begins. Sniper, which will leave Wagamama for the Invoker on Infused in the Radiant side. As uh, I can already s apologize slightly for maybe. Some miskills in the couple in the coming 30 minutes, because I see now the sun is gonna move across my screen and is not gonna be able to let me see all that much. Because uh oh, Fisher on the wrong side, or at least on the wrong side for the disruptor. He is in a lot of trouble right now, but there is at least a gush and some right clicks from Pimpo to help out, and he eats his way through the trees. His only way to get away. Fishbone still doing some harassment, making sure that uh, Rambo turns around. Is he going to land another gush? He doesn't have the mana for it. Land some right clicks. There is a sentry ward being placed up here by the dire side. No words just yet for the radiant side though. And it will be an aggressive trailing on this top lane. Pooling has already begun though. Disruptor helping out. He is thinking about a gush again, but then again, that would be a waste of money. Mana, I should say. <laughs> Look at that harassment. They can just stand there, right click. I mean, they don't have to fear anything. They still got a, set, uh, they still got a fisher, or at least they again got a fisher. Uh, in the meantime, uh, th that will be the the group up on the, on top, the matchup on top, where the advantage will definitely be on the radiant side. Mid lane will be a matchup between the Templar Assassin and the uh, and the Lashrek. I was gonna say Invoker, but Lashrek is more uh, more useful than Lashrek being a natural counter to that Templar Assassin because Refraction will make sure. Uh, sorry, Refraction will pop up very fast with that Edict being there, as you just saw. Uh, he's getting some harassment back, but at least the refraction is already gone. In the meantime, on the Denied. bottom lane, we see Invoker being matched up against the Darkseer. I mean, Cold Snap already on Darkseer. He has a surge. He doesn't really need to use it just yet, though. It's just harassment, but it's enough harassment to make sure that he stays out of experience range. That is exactly what uh, the Invoker needs to do, and that is what we will see him continuously doing. And Darkseer will be able to get some right clicks, but all right, he last hits, but only with that Iron Shell. And Iron Shell makes it easy for Invoker to uh, to deny hits as well, to deny creeps, especially since he's going for Exort, making sure that he uh, can get those last hits a bit easier than normal. And indeed, Darkseer does get a last hit with Wagamama not being on time there to uh, to stop that from happening. Meantime, Lane getting pushed out here on the top lane, and I smell food. Why do I smell food? That is sad. 
someone's barbecuing outside. That's probably the case. Unless my computer is overheating. In which case, sorry if I drop away. But I don't think my computer is overheating just yet. Uh, we see everybody of Infused moving towards the top lane, or at least uh, going behind to as you gank. There is a raid. Rage. They are uh, raised, as you say. There is a ward there, so they know that they are there, and they're going to be extra careful. The other creep ward is there to tank up the tower, so they have some uh, some uh, leeway. But there's the Fisher, and it's going to be no kill for Infused still. No first blood just yet. With the Templar Assassin being fairly safe here against the Shrekler Shrek being fairly safe against the Templar Assassin with his Edict, making sure that she really can't dive. And in the meantime, still in the top lane, it's gonna be disrupted, it's gonna be... No! Oh, there's the first blood, Mini Fisher finishing it off. Region's still alive, Rage is still there, but it's not gonna get the first blood on... Or not gonna get a kill on Fishbone. Fishbone, who is gonna get a kill on... Uh, on the on the yeah, shadow fast. fiend, even though it's Earthshaker once again that picks up the last hit, making sure he gets a double kill there. Only looked away for a second, and action already happening. And I do think that was just overextension from the dire team. I mean, they know they're up against a very aggressive trailing, and this is, I mean, there's a reason these two are the best trailing combination with just so much early game aggression. Fisher that they don't need that much levels of farm to be able to be as effective. And they're gonna continue going. There will be a frostbite. Shadow Feet will drop once again. This time Crystal Main gets the last hit. Fishbone on the run from the Tidehunter. Tidehunter who is getting forced back again by region on his sniper. And that is just 3 for 0 on this top lane. And I do think that is just aggression coming off from the Dire Team that should not have been there. We see Earthshaker thinking, you know what, oh he just runs past the haste room but he doesn't care. Haste room will be for, uh, for the Lashrak I guess. Uh, we see uh, Mini uh, rotating, he uh, came back from the top lane and uh, is, uh, well, it's gonna go back again. It's gonna leave the Templar Assassin free farming. Haste rune up there. Where does he wanna go? Does he wanna kill all the people on the top lane again? He's gonna come in from behind. Is it gonna be a dive? Where did he go? There, there he goes. Yeah, there's a dive. They know that they're there somewhere. Kinetic Field will hold them back for a short while. But the vision is there. As soon as someone's there, there's more vision. Sunstrike will hit as well. Fisher as Disruptor still alive. But now he goes down to the sniper as Tidehunter gets a frostbite. He can't go anywhere. And he might get a kill on Fishbone, but won't be able to get that Fishbone. Who has to run away from this tower? Fishbone? He's gonna die. That is the first kill for the Dire team with a lucky hit from the tower. And just a bit of wrong movement by the by the, the crystal main. It means that Edict making sure that Refraction is off by collecting telephones, but he is taking a lot of damage. And he is doing a lot of damage to Mini. Mini actually will drop here, being picked off by uh, Pussy and Thong. Sunstrike. Will it hit? No, it won't. There goes the kill. It is the sniper that goes down and buys back instantly. He wants to go back on the top lane because the top lane is having a lot of action right now. There's a TP back in. He just wants to continue farming. Will be able to do so. Not missing out on too much golden experience in the time that he died. And did pick up the experience from all the kills that happened on the top lane in the meantime. And I really hope that you're able to see it better than I am because this sun is just so annoying. The Shrek being back on the middle lane right now. And I just noticed that I don't have that one on. Sorry for that. So that you can see. The last hit and the nice being done by both teams. In the meantime, Invoker, who has not really left his lane so far, um, has got two assists just because of the Sunstrike. That is uh, the power of the global top presence top there top from the Invoker. Top. And it's the Darkseer that doesn't have anything done just yet. Ten last hits for him, with the Invoker being on 32 for 19, so it being definitely uh, winning that lane and getting the assist. Double damage up on the Lashrak. Well, is that a Lashrak? Sorry, no, on the Templar Assassin. See, that's the part of the screen that I can't see. So that is uh, my apologies right there. She's building towards face boots. And I'm having my hand over the minimap so I can at least always see that one. So that is the most important thing, right? Minimap. So that I don't miss any kills. We might have a dive here again on this top lane because the creeps are here to tank up the tower. Or they should be there. Sniper landed a hit on the tower, tower so did attack. get some... Uh, get some aggro from there but they might just want to go for this again there is a board here so they see Mini just roaming around here looking for a Fisher to lay down they're trying to be extra careful because of course they died now twice already and well I say twice like almost everybody on the top lane died twice so far and they don't want to have that again I don't blame them to be fair I really don't blame them there's the Fisher there's the Nova there's the, there's the kill and it's Sniper that picks it up it's, uh, it's Assassinate helping out there and Shadow Feet really not doing all too well on this top lane here. I mean, a slight, a slight inch too far out is meaning the kill for 
<laughs> for the sniper, and it's the sniper that takes the kill also. And there is the tide onto Frostbite. Fisher, Sunstrike's on the wrong side. Does it matter? I don't think it does. There he goes. Sniper, double kill for that one. Kinetic kill for Lock Earthshaker in place will be enough, though. It is Sniper that's taking a lot of damage, but Templar has to come here as well, and she will be able to get the kill with this Rupture actually being able to get the last hit for that mini on the run. Is there more face which is not yet up on the Templar assassin? Sort the of slow doesn't hit. There is the. F oh, we have a pause. A pause from the admin. Admins can pause? What? I didn't know that. Uh, and it looks like a. We <laughs> have some question marks. <laughs> anyway, collecting telephones is gonna get a Fisher. At least won't be able to take down the uh, Crystal Main. And he will. Oh, oh, the glimpse! And that is a kill for the Templar Assassin. Ha, ha, ha. And the Templar Assassin is laughing about that. Well, I don't know if you should laugh. She only got those kills after your teammates died. But, you know, whatever works out in the meantime, bottom lane, we have got a Darkseer going down, the Shrek rotating down there to help out with that kill. There was a stun, there was a cold snap, there was Edict, and there was a kill on the Darkseer, marking the, uh, well, the win of the lane for Wagamama here, even though he was already doing great in the last hits, of course. Templar shuts him back into this middle lane, lands a slow on, slow on the sniper, he's a level higher than the sniper here, might be able to do something, or Sunstrike will not hit. Star from a shark will not hit, and it will be Templar Assassin backing off. Not able to get the kill, but gets away with her life, which is also a good thing. Oh yeah, this sniper pick, it's kind of working out though, even though I think they could have done that with every carry that they would have picked up. Fisher, Templar Assassin, Frostbite there as well, but Fraction is being picked off. They're eating assassinate will it be enough no it is not enough she will get away the shrek might not be so lucky though getting slow tower hitting there as well sunstrike in the meantime trying to get a kill but is not getting anything and the shrek actually getting away there very lucky for him and no kill being done as i have to say that glimpse was pretty solid well trying to get a kill on the shrek maybe he should have waited a bit longer before glimpsing him back but Anyway, regardless, Templar Assassin able to get away with because of the kinetic field and no kills being done, which is uh, already in a, in a advantage that they got over the top lane. Tower still goes down, so after picking it up, tower on the top lane uh, went down as well. This is where it should be standing. So there's two towers down in favor of Infuse as they take the advantage over the game. Cold Snap here on the Dark Sea, but he'll be able to get away. 5k gold advantage with only 4 kills difference. It feels like it's more, but it's only 4 kills gold. That's all 4 kills difference. But those two towers uh, making the difference, of course, as well as uh, as just the amount of last hits these people got. I mean, look at that—the three highest are the three on the ra four highest. There's three of them on the dire si on the radiant side, with only the Templar assassin keeping up on the dire side. And only now do we see the the shadow demon being able to farm a bit more now that he's being left alone by the trailing. And he will, of course. I mean, shadow demon is one of those heroes. That can farm really fast. Oh, frostbite as well. Sunstrike. There's a surge, but that's too late. Invoker picking up the kill. Kinetic kill not able to help out, and it's gonna be a dive from behind. Or at least it looks like that. Mini standing at the ready with a Fisher being thrown out. If he's gonna do that, they need to have the creep wave to take care of the tower. Though it looks like disruptor did this. That's yeah. Did see him. He will have some support. Tidehunter does have a ravage. Only just level six. He will use it if he needs to, and he probably needs to. He knows that there's two heroes there. Where is the ravage? No ravage. There's gonna be a dive though. Edict. It is Lashrak that picks up the kill, and no ravage by the Tidehunter. Why no ravage? Echo slam and kill by the invoker on the I Templar assassin. And I do feel that is just. The shame, Darkseer will drop here as well, and the Ravage could have saved them. Triple kill for the Shrek. One Ravage could have changed that. One Ravage would have made sure that maybe people didn't go in after that. Maybe, maybe the Disruptor would have been able to live. But nope, no Ravage, no save. And it is a uh, fuse that is uh, is just uh, taking a lead and just. Uh, Continuing to take the lead. Look at that experience difference. I mean, it wasn't that high at the start because they got some kills for themselves, but right now, four for zero on the t bottom lane. Yeah, that is gonna give you over 4k experience uh, extra over your opponents. So uh, it is a fuse that is uh, looking to take this game, but.
Having said that, Templar Assassin is about to be on her prime. I mean, she has got face boots. She might not have that many items, but she doesn't really need that. She's got her melt almost level 4. In the meantime, it is going to be the Invoker that's going to be in a lot of trouble. But Pops' invisibility now is out of the, uh, there again. And their vacuum is there as well. Will be enough. Iron Shell, and that is going to be a kill, or is it? 19 HP, staying alive. Kinetic Field being dodged, and there is the, there's the Ravage. Kills off the Invoker. Maybe Crystal Main will drop here as well. Will there be more? Trap is there. Frostbite on the Dark Sea, but Crystal Main will still drop. Templar sets a big one up on the track. Picking up a kill on the back. This Raptor not safe. Cold Snap on the Tidehunter as Invoker is back here. And Dark Sea on the run. There will be enough. No, it won't be. Tidehunter going down. Dark Sea going down. And it is a double kill for the Shrak and Templar Assassin, the only one backing off from there because the only one that wasn't there was the was the Shadow Fiend, and the rest all died, apart from the Templar Assassin and the Shadow Fiend. Then, so and the t t and tower is still standing. Quite surprised. Fisher going down. Templar Assassin, Cold Snap, and uh, she's dead. TP in from the disruptor. I mean. Uh, Static Storm doing quite some damage. Has fallen. I, uh, the Dyer team, they, they definitely still have a chance here. I mean, we, we talked about that during the drafting phase. They have got that Wombo Combo from, uh, from all the team fight. They have got a Ravage. They've got a Vacuum. They've got a Static Field. They've got a Vacuum of Souls. They have Dyer's that. If they bring that all together into one big team fight and they get everything going for them, they should be able to take a team fight. If they can do that more than once, then they will be back on top of this game. But right now, it is Infuse that is taking control over the lanes. And that is exactly what we were expecting them to do. Infuse taking the lanes, team fight later on, maybe for the Anal Riders, depending on how much the advantage Dyer's was from Infuse on the lanes, which is turning out to be quite big. In the meantime, top lane, some action going on. Earthshaker oh, dropping there after landing a Fisher. There he was, and he buys back, actually. Templar says, I'm looking for a kill on the Sniper. Sniper taking a gush. There's a trap, slowing him down even more. He's gonna try to TP out there. There's nothing that they can do against that, and he will not die. And there was no glimpse. The Sniper, alive at the base. Looks like Crystal Main might be on the run here, though. I'm not sure what she was thinking here. Gets a Fisher. Crossbite helping out as well. The Shrek's on, not hitting. Nova Edict going off. Echo Slam. Sun Strike Tide Hunter will drop there. Evoker Monster Kill. Templar Assassin will go down. Sorry, it is the Shrek Monster Kill. It's the Shrek Double Kill. It is the Shrek Godlike. It is the Shrek 9 for 0. That is uh, <laughs> his kill stats. And Fisher still lands on the Disruptor. There's not going to be anything else to uh, stop that from happening. As the tower is already dead on this top lane, and they might try to go for more now that they have got those kills. And there is a Ravage again, the Tidehunter is back up again, so they might want to go for that uh, team fight. Shadow Fiend though, getting Frostbitten, getting Fissured. Is there going to be more? Yes, there is. Like, the main pick for the last hit, guys lands on Mini, Mini just bought back. Ravage being used. Gets a kill, is gonna try to go for Fishbone. It is a Crystal Main level 9, tied onto level 8 though, and I don't think he was able to get it. Not enough mana up on him. As the middle tower is under attack. They're defending, and that is good, and they're getting kills, and that is good, but they don't get the combinations, they don't get the team fight combinations that they are built around. Attack. Because the timings are just not in sync. They use it apart from each other, not able to. Uh, to let it come together, which is kind of a shame. Kinetic Field Sniper is going to try to TP out. Will it be possible? I think so. Unless there's going to be a glimpse. No, it wasn't cooldown still. Shame. Shame for the Disruptor. Meantime, Tier 2 Tower is getting pressured here. Second last on the Dire side with the four spears helping out. And the tower is actually dropping quite fast on this Invoker. Invoker was picked up a Yule Scepter, picked up a Hand of Midas. I haven't really been able to uh, look at the items that much purely because there's been a lot of action on the map. See, Darkseer not having that much, no surprise there though. And you should look at the Radiant side more because they of course have more gold to spend than Anal Riders on the Dire side. We've got a Sniper picking up uh, Blade of Alacrity. Is he gonna go for Mantisal? It could be. There's still a lot of options for him to uh, to go for. He's got a Ring of Aquila. He's definitely, I mean, he's just doing good. I mean, he's got four kills. He died twice, yes, but you know, he's Sniper. He'll be fine. Or he should be fine, especially uh, with the way things are going right now. We see Crystal Main doesn't have that many items, but she doesn't need that. She's got the boots, she's got the wards, and we see Lashrak killing off the Disruptor on the top lane. Top lane, which is still covered by uh, by my s by the sun, so that's why I missed that. Dyer's middle so tower uh, is under attack. Scepter also on the Lashrak, so they got two Yule Scepter up on the Radiant side here. Fisher, Frostbite on the Templar Assassin, where is she gonna go? She goes invisible, the only thing that she could do now, she moves away. Lashrak on the side though, killing off! 
the Shadow Fiend, Tide Hunter on the way out, doesn't have a Rabbit Jewel Scepter on the Templar Assassin, Sunstrike is not going to hit anything, Fisher will go down, Stun from the Shack will go down, and Echo Slam will get used with Crystal Maiden picking up the last hit, Crystal Maiden getting a double kill, and there goes another one down, it is Tide Hunter that drops, the Shrek is going to drop there by the Disruptor, which is actually ending its godlike streak, giving a lot of gold to the last survivor of the Dire Team, which is the Disruptor, but... Is it gonna be enough? I don't think so. Tier 3 tower getting pressured. There is uh, nothing really that he can do against that. He can maybe put up a kinetic field, but then again, what are they gonna do with it? Like I said, they haven't had a team fight come together yet. The team fight that they have built their lineup around. We might see a. Uh, it looks like we're gonna see a uh, Dark Seal lose in this match, to be fair. I mean, the way this is going. It is just so not in favor of the Radiant team, and he's looking for a Ravage. He's landing a gush on the Crystal Main. Maybe no Ravage. If he uses the Ravage for this kill, it's not really worth it, but he will be able to get a kill, I think, just by taking Frostbite being there. There is going to be a Fisher, and that is the last hit from the Disruptor. Disruptor ending the killing spree from the Crystal Main. And it's going to be Mini that's getting a slow here as well. Is there a Blink there or anything? No, there's just Face Boots, but Mini slowed so much that he might be able to just get away with, uh, or he might be able to get a kill with that stun there. Fisher there. Landing on two, hits as well, but the refraction was there, Mel damage, one more right to needed, and it is Tidehunter that picks up the kill, Sunstrike will hit on collecting telephones, but he had a refraction still on, Edict there, Nova there, that's the kill, he's chasing them down, There's <laughs> look at that damage, and that is the dark seer down to the assassinate, Tidehunter on the run, has got a ravage, but doesn't have the mana for it, getting stunned, getting cold snap, going down, double kill for the Lair Shrak, 30 for 12, Let's uh, let's put off this one, net worth, whoa, that is quite sad to see for the Dire team. Uh, three highest are on the Radiant team and a lot higher than the Dire team as well. Um, Gold Graph, over 1500k uh, in favor, Experience Graph, over 1500. I mean really, what can they do against this? I mean I said they have to get that team fight going. But right now, a team fight is not enough. They have to have a team fight going, and have to make sure that that team fight is gonna be maybe three on five or four on five. At least not five on five, because I don't think they will be able to get it. I don't think they'll have enough to deal with the, the lineup from the from the radiant team so far. If they have a five on five full team fight, that is the last tier two tower going down on the dire side, and just pointing out that all towers are still standing on the radiant side, and the towers are is what are what are so Im is so important to all the, the, the support heroes on the dire side, I mean they're not gonna get gold by themselves, they get that gold from the towers that go down, but no towers going down, we'll make sure that you see the net worth is just so low, not able to do anything with that, and it looks like Rose Town is being attempted here by Infuse, well I say attempted, but really, is it attempted when you know for certain that you're gonna get it, it's just gonna take, get taken down by Infuse, there's, uh, there's nothing that the dire can do to stop this to be fair. Nothing uh, unless they really want to try to get a combo out there, force that combo out there, but it's not going to be enough. It's, it's just not going to be enough. They won't be getting there in time. They might not get there with full strength because Sniper will be there. Yasha completed 2200 gold, almost ready to buy his man style if he indeed wants to go for that. We've got Shadow Fiend going for a BKB and the Age is being picked up by Invoker. Invoker who's died once so far. Then again, he's got a, he's got, he's got a Hagen in anyway. That's kind of nice, seeing those spells getting pumped out by him. And the pressure is on there. I mean, there's a die ward here on the lane, uh, seeing everything that's there. But if look at the wards on the radiant side. You can see those on the mini map. Blink dagger up on the earth shake in the meantime. But the wards are there. You c basically the die can't go into into the jungle on the bottom lane. They can do something on the top lane though if they want, if they really want to, but then they leave the bottom, the middle lane uh, free and there's just too many people there. There's just a lot of wards there. And there's another ward. Just, you know, you're not gonna get out of your base. Glimpse there. It is the sniper that might be caught out here. Is he gonna go down? It looks like he is. Templar is picking up the kill and that is the kind of pickups that they need to have. <laughs> Gilliam Static Field, he couldn't get out, he couldn't do anything and nothing that he could do to uh, to stop that and that is just a quick kill taken by Anal Riders. And I want to make pun of that name but I really, I don't think I should. It doesn't sound like I should, right? Let's not do that. Yeah, let's not do that. Doesn't sound like a good idea. With Lashrak picking up an ultimate orb, just because he can probably go for a side for a side device or something like that, but we'll find out shortly. 
I mean, they, they're just waiting, seeing when Anal Riders is gonna make a mistake. <laughs> I see someone in the chat saying, should have banned out Sniper. To be fair, I don't think that it makes any difference what kind of carry they uh, they have picked up. They picked up a Sniper, but for all I care, it could have been it could have been anti it could have been Huskar, I mean, seriously, it could have been anyone. They're just doing, uh, doing uh, good with that. The Mantis style indeed complete upon the sniper. And maybe they want to want to push in. They don't have... The I mean, this is the time when the team fight can come out from the direction, though. Know, and they know that there's this a nice field. Towers, tier 3 towers already gone, and they're just focusing down. Look at that. And the range from Sniper making sure that he is going to be able to get that. Echo Slam, blinking, deafening blast. That is Crystal Main down. That is Tide Hunter down. Dark Sea rules there. But what is it going to do? Vacuum there in the static storm as well. That might actually do something here. Crystal Main, uh, or sorry, Sniper on the way out. Will be forced back. Frostbite on an illusion. So far, nobody dead on the Radiant side, but still quite low, I have to say. But two dead on the side of the Dire. And, but they, they forced back confused. Or do they? Or do they? Le Shrek is not scared that easily. Le Shrek wants to go for the Shadow Fiend. It is Urshaker that picks up the kill, though. Mini, is he going to be able to stay alive? Sunstrike will hit on the Dark Seer with Sniper able to finish him off. But Urshaker still dropping their kinetic field there, but it doesn't stop them from right clicking the, these barracks down. Fortification goes on. There will be enough. I don't think so. There is a Tide Hunter alive. There is a Disruptor alive. There might be a Ravage, but then again, there's nothing to follow it up. Ravage being used, but he dies. I don't know what good that Ravage did, but it is used. Can't blame him for not using the Ravage, at least. Uh, we have Invoker taking a lot of damage here. Will go down, but does have Aegis, so we'll be up once again. Her Shrek just getting harassed slightly. But the barracks are already down, so they might just rotate to a different uh, to a different lane, thinking, you know what, that is what we came for. And uh, that is all we came for, and we're just going to back out. Stone from the Shrek hitting on the Templar Assassin. They just they want to get for this kill, I mean, really. Should I still be screaming and shouting for those kills that Lashrak is doing? Lashrak was 14 to 1. Lashrak has got 29 on a goal. That is a thank you, Lashrak. In the meantime, Tier 3 Tower on the bottom lane getting pressed by, uh, by creeps. And there will be uh, help from that with heroes. Surge up on the Disruptor. Kinetic Field doesn't hit. Invoker, Tornado. Might go for more, but he is by himself here right now. He should be backing off. He does back off vacuum. They're not going to chase that down. Too much, uh, too many, too much risk, especially with the Shrek uh, moving up there as well, close to the Invoker. Don't want to have to deal with that because they have to defend their range barracks. Ah, uh, never mind. The range barracks are gone. They have to defend their team for town, maybe. The Shrek looking for something to kill, looking for a target to kill. He might find it also. Tier Tower still being kept alive here. Everybody of Infused grouping up once more. Meantime, top lane getting pressured by Sniper, who picked up a Morbid Mask. I hate to call it, but oh, Fisher killing off a, uh, for Fisher. Airshaker killing off the Shadow Fiend. Airshaker basically being a walking Fisher. Mule Scepter keeps uh, Tide Hunter alive for a slight little longer, but it's just delay of execution. Mini picks up a double kill for that one as we see Sniper being chased down. Still managed to pick up the Disruptor as he runs. Fisher stops the Templar Assassin in her tracks. Surge there, well, Dark Seer goes down, even with the Dire Shell on their Cold Snap Tempers, and there's just nothing they can do. And I wouldn't be surprised to see a GG being called out with a triple skill for the support Earthshaker. Tier 3 Tower, yeah, GG well played, coming off from Anal Riders. It is infused that will move on to round number 3 for this 4PL Cup number 10. If you want to support 4PL Cup, which you do, you go to facebook.com slash 4PL.dota2 with the 2 just written down as a number and uh, you just uh, like, press the like button, that's what you need to do. My name is Shiva, I'm a Ghost of Gamers caster, you can follow me on YouTube on youtube.com slash Shiva Gaming where all the matches that I cast come up as well as like all the 4PL matches so you can watch the previous cups there as well if you're interested in those. As, uh, yeah, we're gonna wait until this throne Dying explodes and then we're gonna jump ourselves into another game. I'm gonna try to find the game for you where uh, Dendi is hiding in, as uh, we see uh, some kills being done here, still double kill by the invoker. They're just trying to have some fun here in the fountain. Uh, it's it's the Shadow Fiend that is still, uh, and the Titans that are still in the game, making sure that Infuse has to kill up the tier 4 towers before doing anything here. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. There goes uh, the tier force. It's very slowly but steadily as the fountain is just getting uh, farmed here. There's no disconnect. It's just the shadow fiend. Just the shadow fiend that's uh, stopping us. I think they're going to be very risky. There goes Invoker. 
At least he gets that one. T4 Tower is not getting attacked in my life. This is annoying. Invoker by Zack. T4 Tower is still alive. You just have to wait until this throne goes down. In the meantime, now I'm just waiting. This is quite not. This is not very nice. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Guardian of the impurities, I Because otherwise, I mean, it will only delay us going into the next game, and we don't want to be here forever. Dyer's middle tower has fallen. There we go. That is the throne Dyer's being attacked here. Has fallen. Dyer's ancient is under attack. Everybody's dead anyway. Go, 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 go! Dyer's ancient is under attack. I'm not even gonna watch that anymore. Anyway, next game coming up quite sure, shortly. I'll let you look at the end screen a little while longer uh, when, uh, when it's actually up. Um, we'll be uh, right, right there. Well, I'm already gonna check which games uh, are gonna be uh, up next. There we go. Let's uh, jump ourselves into the next game. And yeah, of course, outro and stuff.